Ah, so there's another option to promotion and relegation that we just keep not talking about that would make all the levels of the soccer pyramid much more exciting. This debate about promotion and relegation is really something that's been going on for so long that those who are back in the whole idea of PNR are really starting to look kind of silly. In many circles, if you bring it up, everyone turns away and says, Oh, please, let's not talk about that, please. No one wants to really talk about it because it's unrealistic. Yeah, I mean, if you take into consideration the current state of things, uh, what about a compromise? A compromise that makes sense for the whole soccer pyramid, something that will make the whole soccer pyramid relevant and get the slightest of hopes to lower divisions that while they may not get promoted, they still have a chance to win the top prize in American soccer. And we all recognize at this point that the top prize is not the U.S. Open Cup. As beloved as this, as this tournament is, it's still a consolation prize. But what if lower level teams had a chance to win the MLS Cup? Well, first, it shouldn't be called the MLS Cup, but that's something I'll get to later. The fact is, American soccer across the board, from the first division to the third, would benefit if we opened up the possibilities, if we made it possible for a second division team to win the MLS Cup, regardless of the unlikelihood, regardless of how remote the chances are. But just to have a chance, a possibility of winning the championship would change the dynamics of American soccer. One of the challenges of making lower divisions of American soccer viable financially, especially with the non-reality of promotion and relegation, is that your team has no chance at all of being the best. I mean, literally. If you support the New York Cosmos, the Indy 11, or the San Antonio Scorpions, you have no chance at all that your team will be the best soccer team in the country. So just give it up. All fans, all fans aspire to the potential that there is at least a tiny chance that your team can make it to the promised land. Just ask the Chicago Cubs or the Detroit Lions. Just look at the NCAA tournament and how much excitement that it builds for college basketball. However remote the possibilities are for the lowest of the lowest ranked teams. The key to soccer success for fan involvement at every level across the country for the growth of the sport across the country. And this will benefit MLS and every team along the pyramid. Is to give every team in the pyramid some sort of remote chance of being the champion of soccer in America without threatening the current MLS teams with promotion and, and relegation. And here's how we do it. Without worries about fair and not fair. I mean really that's not the point of the solution. First, we have the usual top 10 teams from MLS that qualify for the playoffs and wild card opportunities. Second, we form a bracket where the top six teams make the first round draw out of the MLS. That's pretty simple. Third, the wild card teams have to play to get into the last eight. To do so, the 10th place team of an MLS has to play the first place team of the USL Pro League or the third division first place team. The winner plays the eighth place team to find out who plays the number one seed. So if the USL Pro team does get beat by the 10th place team or the eighth place team, well, they still got a shot, however remote, playing the first place team in MLS. On the other end, the ninth place MLS team has to play the first place team in the NASL at home. In both cases, all the MLS teams get the home draw. But imagine how many USL and NASL fans would show up to watch these games, take buses to watch them. Imagine how it would increase viewership in, say, San Antonio or Upper State New York if the Rochester Rhinos played in the wild card game or the Cosmos or the Indy 11 played in the bottom part of the grid versus the ninth seeded MLS team. In short, 
This would ignite soccer viewership on TV across the board in places where it never had been ignited before. Suddenly, NASL and USL fans will be invested in a tournament to decide who is the soccer champion of the United States. Imagine how many more soccer fans would watch the wildcard games if MLS suddenly invites all the new regions of, of the soccer world and says, your team has a shot too. And maybe if one of those USL or NALS teams made it into the second round, that would be pretty crazy. How much better would it get? Soccer fans in Indiana and Upper New York who have never really followed MLS or watched MLS would suddenly be tuning in on ESPN to watch the games. If you don't like compromise, or if you're the kind of guy that likes to find some sort of schedule dysfunction that would make this potential middle ground solution to turning multi-division pro soccer in America into a fan-crazy blunderbust that can hardly be contained, then you're probably the ultimate cynic, and there's no convincing you. This compromise avoids promotion and relegation, so we won't have to talk about that anymore. But it also allows the remotest of chances to lower division teams, the first place teams, to prove themselves and make some money. If you're one of those guys saying that MLS will never embrace such an option, well, maybe you have a point. It would take some real balls for Don Garber and MLS to make this move. But really, it would only increase the nationwide intrigue in MLS and MLS playoffs in general. I mean, if people in Indianapolis or San Antonio or Charleston or a small part of New York are watching because their team just has that itty-bitty chance, that small chance, how can that hurt TV ratings or ticket sales for MLS? All this means more viewers nationally. And more viewers nationally means more money for MLS and the sponsors. And more money means this option really actually has a chance, a shot, however small. I just need some guy at MLS to give me a call and maybe talk about it with me. Uh, Jonah, Freeman, you available? All right, good night, folks.